made a few months back, a number of months back, uh, late 2011. Uh, most of you aren't here yet. I can see a lot of new faces. Uh, and then, and so, we, so when 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 I made this talk. So they, everyone told me that it's a, it's a, it's okay. But then, now that we're growing, because that back then it was only 30, 40 people. Now we're a lot more. We decided, oh, maybe we should do a redox, do an update, and then present this again because most of the concepts that are in here are actually still very, very much <coughs> meaningful. So, for those of you who have seen this, so uh, there's a lot, there's, there's a lot of. Uh, new things here for those of you who haven't so let's see what you can learn from here so this talk is about meaningful metrics uh, first thing is about myself I'm Tristan and I work here I'm a web designer I came here in Mind Valley as a web, web designer and then they went they, they put me into web development and then now I'm an applications developer so I'm quite uh, all, all, all around the, the company and actually does a lot of, if, if you're a developer, you should start branching out and cross-pollinating with, uh, with other fields to design, even with business. This talk is a result of a lot of my collaboration with the business uh, side, because they needed business intelligence, and, I, and it's just that when two smart people or two, three, four smart people in different fields come together, they get a lot of things, they get a lot of ideas, whereas just one uh, one field coming. So this, well, back then, the current project was lead analytics app application. This was a, a, an analytics uh, gathering application that does uh, calculations. And don't tell them, but business sometimes don't know what they want. So my boss isn't here anymore, so I can say this. I was going to delete it, but he <laughs> And so that's why we have the responsibility to make sure that business has everything they need to make a decision. Because we are the one, we're the vendors of this data, we provide them the data, and so that's why we need to give them the data that they actually need, not the data that they think they would want. And hence, I created this presentation. So, what are these numbers? Can anyone tell me what these numbers are? Figure of Sorry? Figure of Sorry? Your wife. Your wife. Yeah, anyone? Any other guesses? Yeah, so these are actually the uh, measurements of Megaphone. Yeah. Oh, that's good! Yes. But some, something, uh, something that I funny, I observed actually, is that when, so because I've been doing presentations as well before, and they, and th at the end of these, uh, these uh, conferences, these gatherings, sometimes they put out survey forms, and I found out that whenever you put pictures of Megan Fox in your presentation, the survey form results are go up. So you should try that and, and maybe test that one. So how about these numbers? What are these numbers? <laughs> Anyone want to take a guess? Uh, while you guys are taking a guess, it's like uh, did somebody called name Alex or the pizza in this crowd. No, this is not Alex. Okay. Yeah. No. So, anyone want to take a guess? So this is actually uh, Brad Pitt's uh, measurements. Um, yeah, it's actually length and girth. Don't ask me how I knew, but uh, it's actually how I. And I had to put this in before because last the, the, the presentation before this, the some some people complained that why do I just put Megan Fox and why how about the and so on they put in there. So how about these measurements? What are these? <coughs> No, I really any any uh, guesses? Garrett? No idea? No? no? So these are actually the uh, visitor count of this guy and as well as the 
number of Facebook likes of this person. So, what what does this mean? What am I getting at here? Right? What what why am I putting you? Uh, what am I giving you all these numbers? So, the thing is, context is of the utmost importance. The numbers themselves, the numbers themselves don't mean anything. I updated the slide so I don't know. Okay, yeah, they can numbers mean, make, make no sense without any context. When I gave you just those numbers, and you don't know anything about it, then you don't know what it means. And with those numbers, you have to ask yourself, what are those questions that you really want answered? So when you give numbers like those, uh, those vital statistics, or the, the measurements and, and those things, the, the number of Facebook likes, the number of page views, what kinds of questions do you want answered? Like for example, in vital statistics, is she fertile enough to bear offspring? Because is she good reproductive health? Good vital statistics actually uh, mean that you you are in good reproductive health. Is he good enough in bed? Is he fine and pleasurable? That's why you are interested in, in, in those measurements. Is my website popular? Is it reaching the target audience? That's why you're interested in the number of page views that you have. And how long will the, the pain last? How long will I break even from my investment or return on investment? So these metrics are these these are sample metrics that I've uh, I've been exposed to a lot while, while working with traffic, page views, ad click through, sign up rate, fan count, open rate, impressions. How, how many of you have heard of these things? Ah, good. You have worked with uh, with uh, with the business sides. Uh, they're they're also they're, these are also terms that are being thrown a lot about in social media marketers, like oh. If you, if you hire me, I'll give you a lot of these things. But these, uh, these uh, metrics are not really bad per se. It's just that they can't stand alone. If you go to a social media marketer and he just tells you, I will give you 17 million uh, likes in Facebook, it might sound great in the beginning, but it doesn't actually mean anything. It just it's just a number. But what I'm trying to get here is that those types of metrics, standing by itself, it actually just provides a narrow perspective, only scratches the uh, surface, has superficial meaning, it's a one night stand metric. <laughs> you just go there, you, and it, there's no relationship involved in there. I will give you uh, those lights, and then what happens next? There's, no, there's nothing there, very superficial. So what? So we're coming to the meat here. What does the business want to know? Okay, why am I reading about these uh, these naked numbers, just numbers? Because what the business actually wants to know, that's why you're providing these metrics, is that how does it affect the bottom line? What is its, its impact on the business? What are the areas to improve on? In other words, yeah. The, the vital statistics, the actual question you want to answer is, will he be a good father or mother to my children? So his, this is a, a good website uh, comparing good metrics and lay metrics. <coughs> I'll get one of the, one of the graphics here. Uh, for example, measuring clicks, not really that awesome, but measuring loyalty and recency of visitors are better metrics. Page views? Conversation rate, visits, days and visits to, video views, amplification, touches and economic value, email sent, task completion rate, how many people actually did something because of this email, number of press reports, and brand evangelist index. These are better met uh, metrics on this one. So I'll tell you a bit about Mind Valley and how we do business. The boss isn't here, so I can tell more <laughs> about this. Uh, we're actually he here's what we're doing at Mind Valley. We are calculating the value per lead, per class, which in some circles they call a cohort analysis. So this is a quick run of our business model. We go usually go for Google AdWords, which gives us traffic. This traffic goes to a landing page, and then this landing page will usually uh, convert into a sign-up. Then the sign-ups, which we call leads, 
are in, sent into a mailing list which go into a funnel which tries to uh, sell them some products and then hopefully it leads into a purchase. So one of our, uh, one of the co-founders of my, uh, one of the founders of uh, uh, Mind Valley International Business for one, he's in Argentina right now, this is what, what they, he calls the black box of business. You put money in, you get more money out, but the whole workings of this is what the black box contains. So as you can see, uh, it all starts from the Google AdWords, which are the leads. And the important thing here is, how do you measure the value of that lead? So here's, a, here's, here's the system that we, we de uh, developed. It was called Oathkeeper. It answered the million dollar question back then for us, and still answering it now. How much is a lead worth over time? How many of you have ever asked that question? How many of you know that, uh, uh, that, that value? So for example, in, in us, it's a lead for, for you maybe, how much is a customer worth over time in your business? How many of you have thought of that? What? Nothing? No one? Nobody else? Yeah, you should actually start thinking about this because this will be the fulcrum and the focal point on which you will base all of your other metrics. So this is an, a graph. Uh, what, what can you say about this graph? It's not Megan Fox, yeah, sorry. Well, yep. Yes, if you squint a bit, it becomes like that. But what can you say about this graph? Downward trend. Downward trend? Does it look sad? Very sad, yeah. Mm -hmm. Does it look like the business will <laughs> fulfill? But can you still make the trend off? Can you still make the trend off? Give us a good graph to see. <laughs> yeah, this is not a good graph to present to your, your manager, probably. Or your board. Or your, yeah, your boss or your board. But actually, <coughs> this is actually a very good graph. Can you zoom in the legend? I don't yeah, see it's, it's just uh, dates. It says 9 15 2011, 3 15 2012. On the right side, yes. The right side says series 1, 14 per moving average, series 1, exponential, series 1. So it's just, it's, a, it's data points which I, uh, I smooth over a 14 day moving average and then I smooth again over for an exponential, uh, using an exponential version. This is actually a very good graph because here it says uh, it's three US dollars and it says here uh, less than 50 cents. So what does this mean? It means that over six months, your lead actually is worth three US dollars. No. That, that this is the reason why the, the, the value per lead is very important because Imagine if you're advertising and your average cost per lead is one US dollar, in six months you have tripled already that investment. Does anyone does everyone get my point there? Yeah. Yeah. So that's why this actually validates the business model where the older the leads get, you have a relationship over six months, the more they buy from you. That's why this is good. The, the more recent they are, you haven't established a relationship yet, their, their value is still low, uh, very much uh, low. It's less than 50 cents. But imagine when these people here project them six months later, then they will, they will, immediate, they will, uh, they will increase in value. Which is why, again, value per lead is very important because that will, uh, that will that will determine the calculations you do for investment. Are you getting your money back? How much investment can you uh, make even more? So that, because it's, it, this is basically a multiplier. Your, your, uh, your customer value is basically a multiplier of the investment that you give into. So here is a bit of how it works. It's a bit uh, technical. I'll put in, so what, what all paper does is actually just sends in a CSV file that looks a bit like this. So it's a, a lot of uh, a lot of data. It's, this uh, one is our Facebook data, I think, last by uh, May 13. This is around, uh, I guess, eight megabytes. This is just Facebook data. It's very small, actually. Our AdWords data is a lot larger, such that we can't even email it anymore. We have to. We just had to change it so that it uploads things to S3 because it's uh, really, really huge. 
but the so how many of you here has done pivot tables before? Pivot tables. Yes, very good. Because if you haven't, you should start learning how to do that. And it's a very, very important tool, especially for business forecasting and calculations. Even if you're a developer, if your manager doesn't know pivot tables, just teach him pivot tables and probably get a raise or a promotion. <laughs> oh, it's easy. Google it. Yes. So here is the, the pivot uh, the pivot for this graph. It just sorry, can you see the no, I mean, sorry, can you see the, the the legends? So it just says it's a sum of the amounts for the purchase date and the sign up date. This is a, actually a cohort analysis of people who signed up on these dates and purchased on these dates. You have a you have, of course you have a, a bisector here because people who sign up before uh, who sign up here can't purchase before that particular date. So that's why you have a bisector. But as you can see here, you can already create a lot of uh, a lot of graphs. This this particular data point, for example, this is very nice to see because what does this mean? It means that people on this particular class, we call it the class here of the, for example, the October 27, 2011. Well, this is a bad example. No <laughs> sale. <laughs> yeah, for those things, maybe you can ask your business uh, intelligence person, what happened on that day? How come nobody's buying? So here, you can see that they bought, they bought, and then they didn't buy again. This is another bad example. Let's try this one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so for example, here they bought, they bought, and they bought again and over and over. So what are we doing well here? And what are we doing not well on the other days? Maybe it's a holiday, maybe there was no promotion, maybe something's wrong with the marketing, social media there. So a lot of things can be deduced from this, from this, from this uh, pivot table. Right? And this is what I'm uh, talking about as meaningful data. You're not just talking about, okay, 20,000 people signed up from this one. Okay, that's it. And then uh, 30 people bought from, from this date, and that's it. No, you actually start combining them, mashing them around, finding the relationships between them, and making meaningful data on it. And then you actually present it to your business manager because that's what they actually want to know. They, just, they don't want to know how many page views. If, for example, you have 70,000 page views, can you actually know how much does one page view contribute to your bottom line? If, it, for example, you find out it's five cents, then okay, let's multiply our page views by a hundred, and then we can uh, we can get fifty US dollars from from each of the from 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 that particular increase. So, do you understand what I'm saying? The leverage that is there, if you know your numbers. All right, so the tech behind Oldkeeper, because this is webcam and we have to talk about technology a bit, it's written in Ruby. Sorry for the fighting jazz there. Yeah, but it's, 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 it's okay. Uh, it's written in uh, Sinatra, so no rails here. Uh, it's using a sync Sinatra gem, which is somewhat the equivalent of Node in uh, Ruby. It's using MongoDB. Ooh, uh, and it's using a Mongo ID gem so that it interfaces well with the it's with the MongoDB drivers and Ruby. I won't go into detail on that one. So this this particular system of ours, we initially rolled it out for Google AdWords. It was I think August 2011 when we first started it out with one business, and it was it worked very well. And then so we added more and more and more, and then later on, Facebook came, and then Google organic search came. So we all actually know how much an organic search visitor is worth. So we can actually start investing into more uh, content writing. And because the initial design was flexible, it was easy to add use traffic sources and tag them properly. This is mostly due to the uh, MongoDB uh, database that we used. Back then, that was the, this was actually the second application that we used for MongoDB. The first one was called Joffrey, which we, if I invest 1,000 US dollars more on this AdWords campaign, because I can show you 
the multiplier here is 7%, uh, uh, 0 0.7, then okay, the, 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 bit, the, the, the higher ups will approve that particular budget because you have a basis. You're not just saying, you're not in the cloud and just saying, oh, it will probably affect this, it will project something like that. It's not big. And the thing about business is that what you want the business, uh, the managers to, to look at is that how can you take away the risk of them investing in your initiative? The best way to do that is if they are fully informed and if you have a, uh, a stable foundation in your numbers. So, uh, sorry. <laughs> this <laughs> All right, so some caveats on, on, making the, on making a system. If you're interested in making your, uh, your own cohort analysis software, uh, here are some caveats that we've learned. Don't make something that other companies with bigger budgets can focus and do better. So on the, during the development of Oathkeeper, I was very staunch and very much against some of the, the ideas that they were presenting that, hey, we should track these, uh, these funds as well. We should track how people visit the site. Because it's not already, it's not answering the question, how much is a customer uh, worth? It's, it starts going into the question, how much is a page worth? And I believe that if someone or something, some other company has already developed software or a tool to already answer that question, then you shouldn't reinvent the wheel. Just use that particular tool. In this case, Google Analytics is very much uh, suitable for this. They have large amounts of uh, database storage. They have large amount of uh, storage of uh, the data of each of your visitors. They know where the, the visitors came from, where they went out of, how they went through your site, did they go around in circles and those things. And that's something that Oathkeeper just doesn't want to track because something that, because it's something, it's tracking something that Google Analytics cannot track. So you only roll your own solution if the existing products out there do not solve your problems. For example, in our case, we have really hard time, a really hard time putting in the Google uh, goals and goals API because we had a particular layout of our uh, of our purchase forms, so we couldn't put in that put that in. That's why we have Goalkeeper uh, running on, a, on our on our backend. And your solution might be so successful. This is another. This is the caveat I was talking about. So make sure. You dig in enough flexibility. Make sure you look through the future. How do you think your product will be used? And as you're as the developer for this, you should already start asking those questions even before business starts thinking of it. Because it's just how you provide value to your business. If you think ahead for them, then they will realize, oh, this person is actually forward thinking. They can solve more of my problems later on in the, you know, later on in the business. And rule of thumb, here's my rule of thumb. If you cannot attach a dollar value to a metric, you dig deeper, integrate wider, until you actually find a dollar uh, value or it just becomes ridiculous. And then you start measuring. Is the effort into building and finding out what this value is, is actually worth the effort of collecting data in the first place? Because if it is, if you invest enough uh, invest enough into trying to find out what this particular dollar value of a page view or of a customer or of a fan, of a fan, uh, a fan light, how much is that worth? And you measure it and then you find out, yes, it's worth doing it, then do it. It's just what business people will do. You, you, you measure what the investment cost is versus the benefits and you make a decision out of that. So, what is this number? <laughs> this is updated actually. <laughs> Anyone? This is actually this is actually a very important number. This is the number of Twitter followers I have right now. <laughs> <laughs> so if you want to increase that number, uh, just follow me, Harris Kid, uh, in Twitter. And this one. What's the number of value that that? I still don't know. Yeah, we we call it. Uh, yeah, we, I still I still haven't. Figured out. <laughs> and we're Man Valley is hiring actually. So if you want to be part of 
uh, awesome uh, developments of projects and analytics, statistics, and those things. Just go here. We're hiring. And if you want to know more about Mindvalley Business, it's mindvalleyinsights.com. They will, it will fully explain the funnel that I just told you, how Google AdWords gets converted into a funnel into uh, customers and those things. And June 13 is with Design Camp, so I hope you, uh, I'll be uh, speaking there as well. And for the designers, you should go. The last session was very, very interesting. We had lots of uh, 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 round table talk about uh, how was it? What was we're, what were we talking about last time? That's interesting. Yeah, it's it's it's. Target or not the target? I'm sorry. Targeting. Targeting. Yeah. About something about Malaysian something. Yeah. <laughs> something, something. something. Yes. So uh, and I'll leave you with, with this one so you follow me at Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.